Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I am going to be carrying out adjustments of the carburetors and a little bit of tune in order to achieve correct combustion within the cylinders on this Triumph Sprint 900. Now, if you've seen the previous videos with the Triumph, you'll know that um, I've had the carburetors completely apart. We've cleaned them, we've reassembled them, refitted them back to the bike. Now, the bike does run, it runs okay. Uh, there, it's, it's not quite right, there's a little bit of lumpiness um, at the moment, so it's definitely in need of carb tune. What we're going to be using in order to achieve this is um, a, a Gunson color tune tool. Now, the Gunson color tune tool, what it does in effect is replaces one of the spark plugs with an element from the kit. And that element is this right here. As you can see, it looks like a, that end of it looks like a spark plug without the, um, without the, the you know, the, uh, the terminal on the end. But if we look inside, we can see that we can, you can effectively see through it. It's got a little window. And what that does is, it allows us to see inside the cylinders and actually physically look at the color of the combustion. Um, the color of the combustion is what we are going to be using to adjust the mixture. Um, on this particular bike, the, um, the, the spark plugs are actually quite small. Uh, this is a 14 mil kit and will fit most Japanese uh, motorcycles. Um, without any problem whatsoever. However, the Triumph, this or this Triumph in particular, and certainly all the derivatives that use this engine have 12 mil spark plugs, not 14 mil. So I've had to, uh, I'm going to have to fit a adapter kit in order to be able to use it. Anyway, welcome along to the channel, and uh, let's dig into it. Okay, before we begin, what I wanna do is I wanna briefly discuss what it is we're actually going to be doing and how we're going to achieve it and what we're actually affecting um, in order to uh, ensure that the bike's running correctly. So, um, again, going back to the, the video where I reassembled the carburetors, I fitted um, fuel mixture screws. Now they're the pilot screws on the carburetors and they actually sit just under here uh, where my finger's pointing is where the uh, where the mixture screw is actually located. That's the pilot screw just in there. As you can see, they're a bit of a pain to get to, but we'll come on to that shortly. Um, now, what we're doing there on this particular bike is we're affecting the fuel uh, delivery, uh, not affecting the air delivery. Now, as a general rule on carburetors, if the screw, the, the pilot screw, is on the engine side of the carburetor, what you're doing is you're adjusting the fuel. If the pilot screw is on the airbox side of the carburetor, then you're affecting the air. Um, now, if you're unsure, what you can actually do is you can pull the screw out and, and have a look at it. And here, I've done just that. Um, and as you can see, this screw has a very sharp point to it. Looks a lot like a needle jet, uh, in effect. Um, but what we're, um, what we're doing when we adjust this is um, changing the, the amount of fuel that can go in through the through its aperture, as you can see, it will screw into a, an aperture inside the carburetor and meter the amount of fuel that's allowed to flow past. Um, an air screw, on the other hand, isn't shaped like this. It's blunter. Um, what I'll do, I'll actually uh, I'll have a little search around the internet and I will put a picture up right now so you can see the difference between this one and an air screw. Um, so if you if you're unsure which one you've got, as a general rule, air is on the airbox side, fuel will be on the engine side. As a general rule, I personally haven't ever seen um, uh, a carburetor that's different, but I'm not going to say that they don't exist. However, if you are unsure, pull the screw out, have a look at it, and if it's shaped like that, it's a fuel screw. If it's um, blunt like the picture I've just put up, it's an air screw. Anyway, lastly, what I want to do is I just want to mention that when I reassembled the carburetors, I set them to factory settings. Now, carburetors one and three was set to two and a quarter turns out from seated. Now by seated, I mean they're screwed in until they stop. You don't grolly them in. You literally, as soon as they um, are, are lightly seated, that's when you stop. And then you take it back out two and a quarter turns. Um, the carburetor on cylinder two, so the middle of the three, 
that one is two turns um, and that is the factory settings and that's what the manual tells you to do and those are the stock settings and the bike should run at those settings obviously over time different things happen within the carburetors parts wear uh, and, and there may be adjustment required so it may well be possible that at factory settings the the bike is fine i'm not 100 percent sure that it will be i've warmed the engine up ran it up to temperature and it ran okay it was a little bit lumpy it wasn't perfect by any stretch of the imagination and i could hear a little bit of popping in the exhaust so um I'm, I'm certainly expecting at least one of the cylinders to be running quite rich anyway what i'm going to do i'm going to uh pop this screw back into the uh, carburetor that i took it out of and then we can um, have a look up to uh, the actual process itself right what I'm going to do is I'm going to prepare the bike basically to get the tool fitted and all that sort of good stuff and prepare it so that I can actually access the carbs. Uh, on this particular bike, underneath carb one, there is this weird plate and there is a pipe behind here. I'm going to pull it off and hopefully it will give me a, a little bit more room to get into the carburetor. It's not going to be a dazzling amount of uh, room that I'm going to get um, from it. However, every little helps um, because obviously the position of the, the, uh, the screws is awkward to get to um so we want to do everything we can to help ourselves here's the pipe as you can see so i'll put the screws in there and pop it down so what we what we're actually going to be working with is under here and the easiest they're not the screws aren't tight they're easily easily adjusted so you don't actually need to get a ratchet on them or anything you can literally i've just got this little socket with a um a flat blade a screwdriver tip and then it's simply a case of putting it in like that getting it onto the screw and then you can literally t just turn it with your fingers just like so and then using the gunson tool we can watch the color um, and make the adjustments as necessary so um, that's cylinder one obviously cylinder two is going to be a little bit more difficult to get to because it's right in the middle um, uh, but you know the process is exactly the same and the screws in exactly the same location right what I'll do now I'll whip the plug off uh, sorry, whip the plug out even, um, and then we'll get the tool assembled and fit it to the bike. Okay, so here is the uh, here is the plug that I've removed from the bike, and as I said before, uh, unlike most Japanese sports bikes, uh, this Triumph doesn't take uh, the 14 mil kit. Um, as you can see, the uh, thread size is quite different. So that's the reason for this uh, little adapter. I had to pick this up the other day because I knew I was going to do this video. So I um, picked up an adapter in order to be able to fit it. And as you can see, they're the same. So that's what we're doing. Okay, so I'm going to pop the plug down to one side gently. And all the kit is, is basically, um, the adapter, should I say, the adapter kit is the thread insert and a uh, little copper washer and that copper washer obviously is just going to make a gas tight seal now one thing to point out with these guns and color tunes is they don't need to be talked in like a spark plug they really don't all you're doing is just compressing the washer slightly and um, it'll all be good so what we need to do is i need to fit the adapter to the tool like so again they should only be finger tight. They don't need to be any more than finger tight. Finger tight is perfectly adequate. And there you go, you can see that we can see all the way through it and we can see the little window and that's where we're gonna see the combustion process inside the cylinder as it, as it fires and um, allow us to adjust the mixture so we can actually see what's going on. Now, that will go in with the, uh, with the copper washer. This is basically a HT lead. Um, extension we'll call it an extension and what that does is that goes down onto there like so um, screw it all the way on and then um, the other end we can connect our HT lead to like so and then obviously that completes the circuit now what you can do is you can use this to help thread this into the cylinder 
just put it down and then just use that to thread it in place. Um, with, in the case of the, the, uh, this copper washer, it'll obviously want to fall off. Now what you can do is you can um, put a little, little dab of grease on there or something similar and that will help it um, stay in place. Uh, as it happens, as I've taken out the packaging, it was, it, was, it was taped in place and it's still a bit sticky so you can see at the moment it is actually staying in place. However, after the first cylinder's been done, I very much doubt that that tape will be doing anything, but you get the point I'm trying to make. Okay, in addition, what else we've got in the kit? This is effectively a little periscope. So on some machines, you're, you're just not going to have access to be able to see what's going on. And once, that, um, once the kit is fitted into the cylinder, what you can do is you can pop this down in its place over the top. And then what that will do is allow you to see down the tube, uh, just like a periscope, effectively. Um, and I don't know if you can see it on the video, but I'm, I'm literally looking right down into the cylinder as we as we speak and hopefully that's showing up on the camera but i'm looking straight down into the cylinder through the uh, spark plug hole so yeah if you need to uh, if you can't see um by direct line of sight you can use your little um you can use this to uh, to assist and uh, yeah this is basically a little adapter um for fitting the i could take the lead the ht lead part off this is a little adapter to help you to fit the kit into a cylinder using a traditional spark plug socket because obviously these are different sizes to traditional spark plugs. Um, that is an adapter. You use your traditional spark plug socket and then you can tighten it up. However, obviously your traditional spark plug socket isn't gonna help you withdraw this like a, like a normal spark plug would because it, the rubber insert is, isn't gonna grip onto anything. Um, but you, yeah, you get, you get where I'm going with that. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna fit all of this into the bike and then we'll bring it back uh, we'll get it started up and we'll do some adjustments what i do want to do before we actually do that though is i do want to talk a little bit about um fuel mixtures and what we're hoping to achieve okay what we are trying to achieve um by doing this is the getting the correct air fuel ratio so that all the fuel is burnt none is um none is effectively being wasted and um obviously that reduces the amount of uh, hydrocarbons that are actually coming out of the exhaust needlessly because if everything's being burnt uh, during the combustion process then um you know that that that's uh, that, that's a good thing so what we are trying to achieve here um using a little window when we're when we're running the bike and making adjustments we are trying to make it so that the 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 flame inside the cylinder is a bright bunsen burner blue if you get bunsen blue we'll call it bunsen blue um if it's orange then uh, or towards the orange side then the the mixture is too rich and if it's more white then it is uh too lean so what we need to do is obviously make the adjustments as necessary now going back to what i said earlier on about the mixture screws it's useful to know which one you have and the reason for that is because obviously if you've got a fuel mixture screw and you need to weaken or richen the mixture then you need to know which way to turn it and likewise with the air mixture screw you need to um if you're going to lean the engine out you need to um obviously add more air and if you want to rich in the mixture you need to add less air um so you, you need that's the reason why you need to know which one you're uh, you're actually looking at so what we're uh, what we're going to do is i'm going to fire the bike up we're going to run it we're going to look at the color of the flame and then i'm going to make some adjustments um here to uh, get the, the make sure the flame is a nice bunsen blue now this will probably take a little while so i won't um i won't uh keep you watching the whole time what i'll do we'll start off i'll, I'll discuss briefly the color whether i'm happy with it or not we'll we'll actually make some adjustments to the fuel screw regardless of what the color is um so you can see how uh, i'm affecting the mixture and then uh, what i'll do i'll go through the whole bank and then we'll uh, we'll discuss it afterwards Okay, so down here, down in the uh, spark plug well, you can see the kit is all fitted. And what I'm going to do now is I am going to start the bike up. You may, uh, it may be quite loud, so hopefully you'll be able to hear me talking still. And you'll probably hear a bit of popping in the exhaust because I'm fairly confident that we're running a little bit rich. So let me turn the ignition on first. 
and there we go. Right, if we look down in here, obviously I'm revving the engine just to enhance the spark, uh, the, the flame in the cylinder so you can see it better. But that's basically what we're doing. Now, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna make some adjustments to the carburetion. Okay, so I made some little adjustments. I didn't tweak it much, um, but I'm, I'm, I'm a bit more happy with the color that we've got there. Now, I'm not sure how well it was showing up on the, on the camera, um, but it was, more on the, it was more on the white side as opposed to the Bunsen blue. So what I've done is I made a little bit of an adjustment and um, it seems to be a better color now. Um, so what I need to do is I need to move on to cylinders two and three and basically carry out the same process. So what I'll do, I'll, I'll get them done and then I'll bring you back at the end and we'll discuss what we've done. And there we go. That is the last one. A nice Bunsen blue. And as you can hear, it's, the, 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 the engine just sounds smoother. We're not getting popping from the exhaust anymore. So I'm happy that the, uh, the carburettors are doing um, what they need to do. Um, yeah, the, 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 the sound of the engine is much smoother. Um, so yeah, it was well worth doing this. And it's pretty simple. Now obviously, um, quite often what uh, people can do uh, to, to to, to check the fuel mixture is they can use a gas analyzer now a gas analyzer on a on a multiple carburetor engine is not going to tell you um how the mixture is obviously all that's going to give you is an average of the three um together so th this this tool is cheap quick and effective so yeah um it's, it certainly should be in everybody's toolbox if you've got a carburetor bike um you won't go wrong without it so yeah i'm very very happy with that what i need to do now is remove the tool from the bike, um, refit the spark plug uh, and start her up and just make sure she runs okay again. Um, but for the most part, that is the job done. So it wasn't a very, very long video this one, pretty uh, pretty quick and swift and easy. Um, and uh, yeah, I didn't, uh, I didn't film cylinder two because it was quite difficult to get the camera to, to see into there because obviously there's a spine of the frame over the top of cylinder two and it was just awkward. So yeah, I, uh, I did that one off camera. Um, anyway guys, I uh, hope you liked this video, if you did, don't forget to subscribe, hit that thumbs up button and join me on the socials, both um, uh, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, yeah, hit me up on there, um, I'll put the links in the description below. What I'll also do, I'll leave uh, links to the tools in the, uh, in the description as well, so you can go and check those out. Take care guys, bye bye now.